There's um, somebody in the audience tonight, Anthony Papa. Where are you? Where are you? Oh, there you are. Would you be willing to come up for a moment? Because our program is 40 years old and you go way back. And I want you to talk about what your experience with writing in prison was. And then also like to hear from you guys about what you did with writing in prison. Sorry, we don't have more. No chair. problem. How you doing all? I spent uh, 12 years of a 15 a life sentence at Sing Sing Correctional Facility in Austin, New York. It was the first time nonviolent drug offender who was sentenced uh, under the Rockefeller drug laws. Um, brought an envelope up from uh, uh, the Bronx to Mount Vernon, uh, four ounces of cocaine, police sting operation, uh, placed under arrest, 20 cops came out of nowhere. I brought the envelope up for $500, and for that 500, I did a 15 a life sentence under the Rockefeller drug laws. So I went to Sing Sing Prison. And there uh, I was lost, didn't really know what to do with my life. It was sort of like a living nightmare until I discovered my talent as an artist in 1988. Uh, I was sitting in my cell one night, I picked up a mirror, looked in the mirror, saw an individual who was gonna spend the most productive years of his life in a cage. Picked up a canvas, painted my self-portrait, title of 15 to life. Seven and a half years later, I wound up at the Whitney Museum of American Art. Thank you. While I was in prison, I got a lot of publicity, and two years later, Governor George Pataki granted me executive clemency. So I literally painted my way to freedom. While I was in prison, I, I met Fielding Dawson, who ran this program uh, in Sing Sing. Actually, I wrote a piece uh, today about it in my Huffington Post blog uh, about Fielding. Uh, you know, he was a maverick writer, uh, he was a good friend, uh, he treated us like a human being because the rules in prison, especially with these writing programs, is that prison, uh, you know, breaks it down that, you know, you, you really don't treat prisoners like human beings. That's, that's bottom line. But um, Fielding didn't feel like that. He became a good friend to all his students and uh, he was a really great guy. And he taught me how to write. Uh, and it was a struggle for me because I was an artist. So it was always like, what's more powerful, the pen or the brush? And, uh, but that's how I started my, uh, my writing uh, uh, skills in, in, uh, in, in Fielding's uh, classes in Sing Sing Prison. I came out, I actually wrote a memoir, 15 a Life, How I Painted My Way to Freedom, was published in 2004 by Feral House and uh, it was optioned. We're still trying to get the feature film made. Hopefully one, one day it'll happen. So this is a very uh, valuable program, uh, writing in a prison, art, the arts in prison, uh, the creative uh, um, urge is always there. It actually helps you transcend the experience of a prison. Because prison is the most existential environment there is. And what I mean by that, there's something very mystical about living in a six by nine cage for 15 years. So you really find out who you are. So for me, I, I found out I was this artist, a writer. For a lot of people, uh, they use it as vehicles to transcend the negativity of imprisonment, to survive. Because prison is a hard place to survive. And the way you survive is you find meaning in your life. And meaning is found through the creative arts, through writing, through poetry and, and art. Thank you.